Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the class act at Kauai Community College, the show that highlights campus happenings and goes deeper with its professors and students so you can hear why this is where you want to be. It's that time. Let's get it on. Another day here at Kauai Community College, a beautiful day at that. I have the very incredible pleasure of sitting down with one of Kauai Community College's finest, is what I'm calling it. Kumu Pua Rossi is here with me today. Kumu, big mahalos for allowing me your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. It's uh, an incredible time to be able to sit down with you because I don't think you and I have really had the chance to actually just kind of talk like this. No, definitely not. Yeah. So I'm excited because I got a lot of questions for you. I want to know, I want to start things off by talking about what it specifically it is that you do here. Now, I know you, there are, I know that you teach Hawaiian studies. Mm -hmm. Now, you teach a certain specific part of it, right? Right. Okay. So tell me about what exactly you teach. Okay, so that's going to take a little bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. I have, um, so I teach both the language courses. So we have Hawaiian language 101, 102, which is okay. beginning. And then I teach 201 and 202, which is intermediate. Okay. And then on top of that, I also teach Hawaiian Studies 107, which is sort of your overall culture course, kind of okay. an introduction to Hawaiian Studies. Then I have um, Hawaiian Studies 270, with this, which is Hawaiian Mythology. And then I also have all the hula courses on campus. So we wow. have about two or three hula courses on campus. And that's the Hawaiian Studies Hawaiian language. But where a lot of people don't realize is that my other courses don't fall under Hawaiian Studies discipline. It's Hawaiian Studies. Okay. But it's just not a Hawaiian Studies course. In other words, I teach Religion 205, which is Hawaiian religion. Wow. Um, History 284, which is um, understanding Hawaiian religion. Or in, oh, I'm sorry, History of the Hawaiian Islands. Uh -huh. um, Hawaiian Studies 284K, or History 284K, which is History of Kauai, and then Anthropology 220, which is Prehistory of Hawaii. My goodness. Okay, yeah. so it sounds like... So it keeps like, me busy. <laughs> I was going to say, that's an understatement keeping you busy. That is an incredible load. And by the list that you just went over, it sounds like you teach a ton of what is, so to speak, required for mm -hmm. different degrees outside of the Hawaiian Studies realm as well, right? Because it sounds right. like there are a lot of requirements that you cover within different degree programs at the college. Right. So I've actually had, it's been interesting because I've had students that are from automotive. I've had nursing students. I've had students in the hospitalities industry. And oftentimes what's kind of neat about it is that they'll take one class and they'll get really interested in it. And then they'll end up double majoring. So those students wow. that I mentioned that had the automotive would also double major in Hawaiian studies or Incredible. nursing, but they started off with a Hawaiian uh, study certificate. So it's neat because then we see them going into all these different fields, but then they have that Hawaiian studies background. Wow, that's really impressive and really interesting, as you said. And something I want to touch on is obviously you being a Kauai girl, so to mm -hmm. speak. Born and raised. Exactly. So... <laughs> With you being a born and raised Kauai girl and, you know, obviously within the culture itself and growing up in that way, you, what's the sense of feeling or what's the feeling that you get with the kind of responsibility you have from a cultural standpoint? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm, where I'm kind of going with this one? That's I, a heavy question. I know exactly what you're asking me. Um, it's interesting because as both Kanaka Maoli and somebody who's from here, and on top of that being a professor of Hawaiian studies, right. you have a lot of different kuleana because you have that kuleana to the school. Mm -hmm. But then in addition, you have that kuleana to be kind of a leader in the Hawaiian community as well. Right. And that's not something that's just me feeling like that. I think all of the professors in Hawaiian studies throughout all of the universities and the CCs or the community colleges have that same sort of responsibility that they mm -hmm. feel, that they don't just represent the school they work for, but they also represent the Lahui, the nation that they're representing, right. um, the children that are coming up and being raised in that way, um, the families that they represent. So we have a lot of responsibility or kuleana to, to not just be here on campus, but to be out there Right. And to share that knowledge with the with the rest of the community and to try and bring as much as we can to campus and back out again. So we really try and be that bridge from campus to community. That's a really, really deep, um, I guess, uh, a deep way of or a 
heavy load or heavy burden in a way, so to speak, right, that you carry because there's so much that you have to or that encompasses all that you do and all the different things that you have to connect. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine how incredibly, I don't know what the right word is almost, but incredibly, I guess, full uh, within your heart and within everything else that you have to bring together and that you have to connect together. I mean, not only for students, but for faculty, other faculty members Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So you really have to be a team, not only a team player, but a almost like almost like the head coach of the team so to speak right i think well you made a comment when you said it's a it's a heavy load or or a burden i wouldn't use the word burden okay well, that's um, good. burden it's because it almost makes it feel like you know it's not something that you enjoy but i i'm really blessed i think or privileged to be in this role mm-hmm. because i do have a lot of aloha for the hawaiian culture i was raised in it right and to have that opportunity to to share that love and to share that knowledge, I think it's it's definitely not a burden. It's it's just part of who we are. Right, 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 right. And if you love it, it's like it's it's not heavy. Right, you know what I mean? Right, it's right. not heavy. Exactly. It's a lot, but it's not heavy. And I definitely <laughs> don't want to get misinterpreted or anything. So I'm glad you cleared yeah. that up because definitely I can use some of the wrong words at some point at some time. Oh, we so all I do. For that. So, <laughs> Um, let's talk about, you know, at, what does a great day in your classroom look like? Oh, that's such a good question. It's, I like it when I can see students make that connection with what's being taught and they can connect it into their own life or mm-hmm. something that they see. Because a lot of what I teach is because I tend to teach more of the history and the prehistory courses that's past stuff that's happening. And so sometimes when a student is taking that class, it's like, how is this relevant to me? And then when I see them make that connection and they they realize, okay, what I'm learning in class is totally relevant to what I'm going to do when I walk out this classroom door, that is a perfect day. Or even just something as simple as, because I like to take students out if we're out and they're they're telling me their stories or they're telling me about what they want to do when they when they leave campus, um, just making that connection mm-hmm. that to me is another great example of a good class day. It's just making those connections. And you just talked about something uh, that was very interesting. You like taking them your students out. So is it safe to say for folks who are wondering and folks that are thinking about coming into the Hawaiian Studies program that your classroom goes quite far beyond the four walls of the classroom? We try to. It's not always easy because you always have to deal with transportation or they got work before or work after. So we try to. So I at least try to do one at the very least. Okay. Just get out of the classroom. It doesn't have to be anything strenuous. Um, For example, if it's a history class, maybe checking out the museum. Mm -hmm. If it's my prehistory class, if we're talking about the fish ponds, it's awesome, but it's really cool if you can actually go and see a fish go pond. Down to it. So to me, that's, that's yeah, if you're going to take one of my classes, expect to leave class at least once. <laughs> <laughs> Be ready to work, uh, I think, is the, uh, is, the, uh, is the census I get. And I've been able to sit and watch you teach um, just slightly that I can remember. And it was right in the beginning uh, when I embarked on my journey here at Kauai Community College. And... The one thing that I know that I love about watching you teach is you're very confident in everything that you have to teach and say. Oh, thank you, you definitely uh, are not afraid to make sure that students know you're not only coming from an educational background, but you also lived it. You mm-hmm. also were brought up in it in the actual culture itself. Right. So I think that that's something that gives credit not only to you, but to the students in the sense that they can make a personal connection with you. Yeah, and that's think, very important. And I think that's right. I was just going to say, can you talk about how important it is for you as an instructor to make a little bit more of a personal connection maybe with your students? Oh, that's... That's the main thing to Mm me. Um, You know, in today's world now, we're doing a lot more online courses. And for me, that's a little bit difficult because I really like that face-to-face interaction. I like that personal connection. 
And the reason for that is because I actually got my educational start at Koi Community College. You did? So my parents made a really interesting decision to homeschool me. So I never actually went to any kind of formal school. Interesting. And they did it at a time when it was really, you you didn't do homeschool. Like nobody did. What is this, right? right? right, So it was kind of crazy at the time. And because of the fact that both my parents are Hawaiian, they're both Kanaka Maoli, they wanted to have me learn, you know, traditional Western curriculum, but then also incorporate Hawaiian history Mm -hmm. and Hawaiian values and Hawaiian culture. So I got kind of the best of both worlds, but I'd never actually had a formal education. So when I graduated, I came to KCC because it would be easy, right? Right. Start off kind of slow and get test the waters. So I came here and I went only part time the first year, but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And it was honestly one of the best parts of my life because of the fact that you had these teachers that are, that cared about you. They knew your names. Right. They um, as soon as they found out that I was interested in Hawaiian studies, they they sort of like uh, just really encouraged that kind uh-huh. of fan the flames, if you will. And if there was something that was relevant to what I was studying, they'd let me know about it. So that connection that they made with me helped me on my educational path. So after I graduated from here and I had to leave the island and I went to um, Hawaii, the island of Hawaii, and finished up, I knew I always wanted to come back to KCC because I got so much from it. I wanted to give back. Wow. And so for me, that student connection is everything because... I think that's what helped me to succeed. I know that's what helped me to succeed. So if I can even just get one student to like look back at their time at KCC and say that was one of the best times of my life, and I had just even a small hand in that, to me that's everything. That's awesome. That's incredible. And I actually didn't know that about you. So thank you for sharing that because yeah. that means a lot to, uh, just to me as well as our audience, I'm sure, uh, to be able to connect with you on a little bit more of a personal level. Speaking of that, Let's talk about a little bit more uh, of your journey specifically. So you actually did go over to, was it UH Hilo? UH Hilo. Okay, so you got your, you finished your uh, teaching credentials there. Well, I finished, I got two degrees. So I got a degree in Hawaiian Studies and a degree in Anthropology. Wow. And then I moved home and um, I applied for the master's program in Hawaiian Studies at UH Manoa. Okay. But they were it's it was kind of new. I think it was only about a year old when I got into it. And so they allowed for a couple of us to live on our islands and do it distance. Wow. So I came home and I did um, Kapa'a Middle School. I taught Hawaiian Immersion at Kapa'a Middle School for one year. But again, my dream was always KCC. Right. And they never had a position open here. <laughs> And so I think I must have been at Kapa'a Middle School for maybe half a year and a position opened up for the first time in I don't know how many years. <laughs> and I didn't have the credentials because I didn't have a master's degree. I was in the process ah, of getting okay. one. So I said, well, I'll just apply. Right. I really didn't think I was going to get it, but I'm just going to apply. Of course. And it was definitely intimidating to walk into um, your interview with all of your former professors <laughs> there <laughs> interviewing you. But luckily, I think that's actually what gave me an edge was because they knew who I was. Right. And they knew what I was capable of. And I got a call from back then we had a provost. It wasn't a chancellor. So I got a call from the provost saying, you got the job. And... I've been here ever since. I think this is about 13 years. I was just going to ask. Okay, I was so young. Years. I was about, I mean, some of my college students coming in were my age. And wow. I remember a few of them looking at me like, are you the teacher or the student? It's like, <laughs> no, I'm a teacher. <laughs> so that even took a little bit of, you know, because you kind of had to prove to them right. you knew your stuff. Right. Because to have people come in that knew you from baby kind days right. or small kid time and come in and going, you're our teacher. I mean, you really <laughs> had to. And when you spoke about being confident, it was you really had to prove in the beginning, like, right. no, I know my stuff. I do. I'm your teacher. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's nothing more that I think is more incredible than being able to show um coming full circle as you have, mm-hmm. because, you know, like you said, Kauai Community College specifically gave you the foundation to be able to move on and go in on that journey and oh, then yeah. come back and do it. And that's got to be an amazing feeling. And I, and I know you talked about that a little, a little bit already. 
for students that are coming through high school and are wondering what they're going to do, would you agree, even in today's uh, current times, I guess, if you will, would you still say Kauai Community College, community college in general, is the best way to start? I I truly believe so. Okay. Uh, the reason I say that is because it it just gives you that really solid foundation. We've got great teachers here. We've got really good classes and. You know, I know these teachers, they want the best out of their students. Absolutely. And they want to give them the best. They want to make them critical thinkers. They want to make them leaders in the community. They want to give them opportunities that they might not otherwise have. But I definitely think this place is such a good starting point to just prepare you for anything. I mean, I I don't want to say that I wouldn't have done well if I went straight to Hilo. But I think I would have been a less confident person, and right. it would have been a real struggle, I think, for myself, had I not done it the way that I did it. And I, I don't want to cut you off, but I want to just touch on this. Do you think that, well, not do you think, was going from KCC to UH Hilo, did it make things at UH Hilo I don't want to say a breeze. I bet that's not the case. No. <laughs> but like you said, it must have made a huge difference in the way things went at Hilo. Absolutely. Okay. I think if I had gone right when I graduated, I mean, just already the having to move to a new island, mm -hmm. and it's just a few, you know, it's only a few hundred miles right. away, but being a Kauai girl, I'm like, don't make me go. <laughs> uh, but already having to deal with a new island, living on your own, you don't have mommy and daddy there, living right. on your own, having to navigate that world in itself is a lot. And then on top of that, you're learning how to become a college student. I know I think <laughs> the way that I did it was definitely the way to go because I knew how to be a successful college student. Right. All I had to worry about when I got there was more about, okay, how do I be successful on my own mm, as a college okay. student? Very cool perspective. Very cool to hear that. Now, I don't want to get away from this, but I want to kind of touch a little bit more on the uh, curriculum, so to speak. In your class, you were, you know, we were talking about all the different aspects that you teach. And I think one of and I very well could be wrong, but I think one of the important things within Hawaiian culture, and I think it's being taught uh, here, so to speak, is sustainability. Yes. And being that, uh, being such an important subject within Hawaiian culture, can you touch on that to any degree as far as what may be going on in the Hawaiian Studies Program or um, to the level that you guys teach it and so on? Sustainability is such an important part of what we're doing because... One of the things that, and as I mentioned, I'm teaching a lot of history courses. So again, it's like looking at the past, but that's important because recently, for example, in my anthropology course, they're learning about the food production systems, like the lo'i and uh -huh. the fish pond. And we watched a video that was put out, oh gosh, a few years ago, and it talked about how we really only impacted about 15% of Hawaii's um, systems. Wow. And yet we were 100% sustainable. And yet today, it's almost like the opposite. And it really got that class talking about the fact that if we were not, if we don't look at how we're producing our food and where things are coming from, if something were to ever happen and we'd be cut off, we just have a few days of exactly. food storage. But our kupuna showed us that it was absolutely, I mean, absolutely ach ach um, achievable for us to be 100% sustainable. It's not impossible. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at that. We have to look at how they modeled it, and then we have to kind of adjust it to what our needs are today. So we're re we really are looking at sustainability and how we can be um, using the practices of our kupuna in today's world, in today's context. The local or the fish pond being one of them, our lo'i here being another one of them. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, students will learn about these systems, but I go there. I take them there so they can see what's happening and how they can get involved. But we definitely talk about it. Um, I'm part of the sustainability committee. We Hawaiian Studies has always been really activated in like our Earth Month activities right. and just getting the discussion, you know, what's happening and right. what can we do. And Hawaiian Studies definitely lays that foundation. I mean, Hawaiian studies and the culture is all about sustainability. 
and it's just taking that practice and, and implementing it in today's world. I can't uh, begin to put to words how incredible it is to be able to hear you uh, talk about it because I can tell that you're passionate about it and it's something that you truly care about and it's something that you truly want to get your students involved in and have that same passion when they leave the classroom. And I think it's uh, obvious that Kauai Community College as an institution is very much involved in trying to create a much more sustainable Kauai. And I think that that's a great thing. And I think, you know, everything that you guys are doing from the department standpoint to just getting people involved and word out there is absolutely incredible. I mean, I don't know how much, you, we always say there's room for improvement, right. but I don't know how much more. I mean, there's you guys are doing an incredible job over there. Well, at this point, I think I've uh, taken enough of your time today. I want to thank you so much, Kumu, for being here and for allowing me the opportunity to sit and talk with you. It has been incredible, and I hope that we get to do this again soon. Thank you. This was fun. Oh, we're going to do it again. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Class Act at Kauai Community College. The views and opinions shared by the host and any guests are solely theirs and do not reflect the feelings or opinions of Kauai Community College as an institution. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast with our professor, check out the other episodes with different professors. Aloha.